Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hengdal Chitta. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. Delusions are countless. We vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless. We vow to embody it. We'll start with our 15 minutes of seated meditation.
And we'll chant the Gatha on opening the sutras. This Dharma, incomparably profound and minutely subtle, is rarely encountered, even in hundreds of thousands of millions of ages. Now we see it, hear it, hold, and maintain it. May we completely realize the true mind of all Buddhas. So this is a, a little bit of a surprise in an extremely informal setting this evening. I was thinking about that, uh, that expression, once the other shore is reached, the raft may be discarded. And that's often used uh, for a teacher to describe the path of liberation once the Tori is reached and, and in the normal process seeking way that, that we have, we even at that kind of miss the point of letting the raft go and we concentrate on all of the things we have to do before we get there. The, the practice and the practice is certainly important, but we, we liken it to a series of steps that are undertaken. We have to we have to gather the materials and we have to gather the cordage and we have to make our raft and, and we have to get on the raft and pull it across to the other side. And, and these are all very useful analogies, again, for, for the daily practice. And the practice is extremely necessary. One doesn't cross without the practice, without right effort without the, the great faith, the, the great devotion, the great doubt. But there's this other great story. And the young seeker is on his journey and as he travels, he comes to the side of a very swift river and he's standing there and he's looking at the river and he doesn't know how to get across. And the river's running and, and he doesn't think he can wade across and he can't swim. And he looks and there's, there's, no, there's no trees and nothing to cut them with anyway. And there's no cordage and there's no pole. And, and he's really not sure what to do. And so he's just sitting there on the edge of this river, meditating and waiting. And he sees a great master on the other bank. I always wonder in those stories, you know, how, how you know they're, they're a great master. I don't know if there's a sign flashing or it's, you know, the color of the robe. But, you know, we, we take that as red that he recognizes this, this master. And he calls across the river to him and he says, Master, can you help me? How do I get to the other side? And the master stands there and he looks up and down the river and he looks across and he says, Son. You're already on the other side. And I, you know, I think about that one. And, and that's not to say that, that we're all just, you know, walking around, you know, little, little uh, pieces of floatsome, you know, eating some lettuce here and there. And, and we're already arrived. And, and uh, But it's, it's our hangups on those steps, on, on even creating the raft, when we use these analogies, on even using the analogies. We, we always get hung up and tied up on the descriptions we use to try and explain what we're doing and how we're doing it and what we're going to do when we attain something, if we attain something. And sometimes I, I, you know, I hear a story like that and I think about the simple thing like your glasses. And if you're um, of a vintage that many of us are, you know, you can walk around for an hour having a fit and saying, damn it, where I, I just had them. And, and you're walking around the house and you're like, it, they were right here. And it, it's not on my desk. And, and you get your keys and you go out to your car and it's not in the car. And you, you look on the sink in the bathroom and you look on the bed and you're crawling under the couch. And then, oh, shoot. 
wow, I can see now. Then I think about how much of our lives and our time we spend doing just that. We're so focused, so concentrated, so fixated on our goals and steps and objectives and rafts and teachings and jobs and families and problems. And why does my toe hurt? I don't remember hitting my foot last night. My toe hurts and I don't know what's going on. And we can't see anything. And then it's, oh, there, there's my glasses. I'm on the other side. It's all clear now. We just have to watch. We have to be careful. Even in our own teachings, even our own analogies, even in our own minds. Not to get caught up in the delusion and fool ourselves with thinking that it's something over there. It's, it's something at the end of our journey. Instead of realizing it's something that is what this journey is doing right now. And if we're mindful, if we're open, how we're living this journey right now in this moment, because ultimately that is the only ground we have upon which to work and to act. And with that, I'll stop talking and let us have another 15 minutes of silent meditation.
chant the Heart Sutra. Maha Prajna Paramita Rereya Sutra Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva when practicing deeply the Prajna Paramita sees that all five skandhas are empty and is safe from all suffering and distress. Shariputra form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. That which is form is emptiness. That which is emptiness form. The same is true of feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. Shariputra all dharmas are marked with emptiness. They do not appear or disappear, are not tainted or pure, do not increase or decrease. Therefore, in emptiness, no form, no feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no color, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind, no realm of eyes, so forth until no realm of mind consciousness, no ignorance, also no extinction of it, so forth until no old age and death, and also no extinction of them, no suffering, no origination, no stopping, no path, no cognition, also no attainment, nothing to attain. The Bodhisattva depends on Prajna Paramita. The mind is no hindrance. Without any hindrance, no fears exist. Far apart from every purpose, Inverted view, one dwells in nirvana. In the three worlds, all Buddhas depend on prajna paramita and attain anuttara samyak sambodhi. Therefore, know that prajna paramita is the great transcendent mantra, is the great bright mantra, is the utmost mantra, is the supreme mantra is able to relieve all suffering and is true, not false. So proclaim the Prajna Paramita Mantra. Proclaim the mantra which says, Gate, Gate, Para, Gate, Para, Sam, Gate, Bodhisattva. Gate, Gate, Para, Gate, Para, Sam, Gate, Bodhisattva. Gate, Gate, Para, Gate, Para, Sam, Gate, Bodhisattva. And our dedications of merit. All sentient beings are one seamless body and pass quickly from birth to death. We remember those who cared for us and are gone, those who are ill those who are at war, who are hungry, and who are in pain. May they heal and have peace. We especially dedicate our service to Pua Min and the people of Sri Lanka, the people in the war in the East, Mike Jinji Wood, the Sheridan family, Megan Ball, Anyone you'd like to add? And my wife, Mylan Daniels. All beings in the 10 directions, subject to the greed, hatred, and delusion of themselves and others. All Buddhas throughout space and time, all honored ones, Bodhisattva, Mahasattvas, wisdom beyond wisdom, Maha Prajna Paramita. Our faith and practice vow. 
I will never retreat and will be firm in my mind in this correct dharma. I will escape from the samsaric cycle of birth and death and definitely will see my original face. I will be sure to inherit the insight of the Buddhas and save all sentient beings. Infinite realms of light and dark convey the Buddha mind. Birds and trees and stars and we ourselves come forth in perfect harmony. We practice and recite this for all beings in the world in grateful thanks to our many guides along the way. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly by and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature. Do not squander your time by night or day. <laughs>